So now we're going to get rid of these buttons. We're going to go into oscillator 1JS. We're going to just delete this div with those buttons in there. Cool. In store.js, we're going to totally remove oscillator 1. So we'll remove it where we define it there. We're going to not connect it to gain 1 anymore because it doesn't exist. We're going to totally delete these two actions, start osc and stop osc. We're not going to use it in the change osc1 reducer action. We're not going to use it in change osc1 type either. And then down here at the bottom, when we're doing our initial values for oscillator 1 settings, we're not going to be able to use osc1 to set those values anymore. And we actually don't need frequency at all anymore because our QWERTY Hancock keyboard is telling us what we want for that. And for this, we can just put zero for detune and we'll have our default wave type be sine. Now in our make osc action, instead of just using sawtooth every time, we're gonna say state dot oscillator one settings dot type. And instead of detune of zero, we're gonna say state dot osc one settings dot detune. Now you'll see that these controls apply to the oscillators that we're creating with our keyboard instead of that OSC one that we were controlling with the two buttons up there. So one thing, let's get rid of this blue outline there because that's kind of ugly and let's get rid of this frequency range input because we're not using that anymore now that the keyboard is telling us what frequency to play the oscillator at. So first let's get rid of that button outline. We'll go into our app.scss. We'll say button focus outline zero. No more ugly outline. Now in OSC1, we're just gonna go ahead and delete that whole div containing the frequency parameter. And we no longer need frequency in here because we're gonna be controlling that with the QWERTY Hancock keyboard. So back in our store.js, we no longer need these console log statements, so we can delete that one, delete that one. And now instead of passing in null for the envelope value on our new oscillator and having the oscillator use its default values, we're going to use a state value in here. So we're going to say state.envelope. And now we got to set up the initial values for that. So we'll come down here and say envelope. So this is going to be an object, and we're just going to put the same default values that we were using inside of our OS class right in there. Now our envelope is working using state values, which is good because we're going to be able to update those state values when we want our envelope to sound different. And you can hear that sound is a little distorted. And that's happening because of that React strict mode firing our use reducer actions twice. And again, this is only going to be a problem in development, not in production. So you can get rid of the React strict mode if you want to, but we're going to leave it where it is, and we're just going to decrease the gain of gain 1 to give us a little bit more headroom here. We'll do one-fifth of its full volume. And now... No distortion. Now we're going to make a control component for our envelope. So we'll say adsr.js, and here rafce. And here we're going to give this a class name of control for now. And here we're going to put an h2 for the title. We're going to do adsr. We're going to need a div with a class name of param. Inside here we're going to do an h3. It'll say attack. Then we need an input. It's got to be a type of range. We're going to give it an id equal to attack. And we're going to have its on change be a function that we're going to make in a second. It's going to be called change. Copy paste this param div three times so we have four in total. Change here and here to decay, here and here to sustain, here and here to release. If you look at the values that we're using for our envelope, these are actually some pretty small numbers. So we're not going to want the default range of 0 to 100 that we're going to have on all of these inputs. So I'm going to give this one a maximum of 2 with a step of 0 0.02. I'm also going to put that onto the release. And for the decay, I'm going to put a max of 1 and a step of 0 0.01. And I'm going to put that on the sustain as well. Now we're going to do our change function. It's going to get one argument, e for event. 
and we're gonna need to send an action to our reducer with update state, but we don't have update state in here yet, so we're gonna need to import ctx from dot dot slash context slash store, and we're also gonna need our use context hook from react, and we're gonna set up our app state and our update state with the use context hook and pass it in our ctx. Now we're gonna give our action a type of change ADSR. We're gonna give it a payload, which is gonna be an object. And again, we're going to destructure the ID and value off of the e.target. And we're gonna pass both of those in and send them to the reducer. Now in store, we're gonna create a case for the action that we just made of change ADSR. And in here, when we return the new state, we're gonna spread in the old state we're going to overwrite the envelope. We're going to spread in all of the current state dot envelope settings, and we're going to overwrite the one that has a key of what we're getting for the ID off of action dot payload, and we're going to overwrite its value with the value that we're getting off of action dot payload. Now we just have to render this thing, so we're going to import it up here, like import ADSR from dot slash components slash ADSR, and we'll just put it right underneath oscillator one. There it is. Though you'll notice all of them have values turned all the way up that don't reflect the initial state values for our envelope that we have in our reducer. And that's because these inputs currently are not controlled. So we gotta go into ADSR and pull those values off of app state. We're gonna grab the attack, decay, sustain, and release out of the app state dot envelope. And we're gonna use each one of those as a value on the corresponding input. So here we'll say value equals attack. Next one is gonna be value is equal to decay. Value equals sustain. And value equals release. Now we have some nice controlled inputs. Now we have this weird issue where if we change one of our ADSR values like this attack for example and press one of the keys on our keyboard we're gonna get type error, failed to execute, linear ramp to value at time on audio param, the provided double value is non-finite. So what it's saying is that it's expecting a finite value and a double value is a kind of number. So it was expecting a finite value for that number, but it got a non-finite value. And it's showing us that it happened in this dot gate gain dot gain dot linear ramp to value at time. And then inside it's the one that's doing the attack. And that's because that's the value that I changed. This is happening because this.envelope.attack is actually currently getting set to a string because when we destructure value off of the e.target, these inputs down here, and pass it into the action, we're getting a string for that. So we can go in here to our reducer action and we can just wrap that value in number. And now we will no longer have that problem. So that's our ADSR. Let's go get rid of this blue outline on our range inputs though. In our app.scss, just come down here to where we were doing it to our buttons and we'll just say input focus. Cool. Next we're going to make our synth more interesting by adding more oscillators and effects to it. 